It's not every day that you can create an environment completely from scratch. Our selection of each piece was meant to be timeless yet contemporary. Because you only get one chance for a first impression. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. As always, we've got a show filled with fabulous homes. So of course, I had to bring it to you from a suitably fabulous location, such as this brand new penthouse right here in the Flatiron District. Decked out with Italian porcelain floors, high ceilings, gas fireplace, and natural light everywhere you look. The sleek eating kitchen is, as you'd expect, amazing. And though I haven't had the chance to cook here, I can just imagine getting down with a Sunday sauce because this place is begging for a delicious mess. <laughs> At 3,900 square feet of stylish living, this bespoke three bedroom, three and a half bath beauty looks dreamy any time of day. And speaking of dreamy, you are gonna love our first apartment. A beautifully designed home located within the Aster, an elegant historical building on the Upper West Side. We're with Andrew Bowen, principal of Ash Staging, who enhanced the layout with his design to bring style, comfort, and just the right amount of drama into every space. See for yourself. It's not every day that you can create an environment completely from scratch. And designing really allows that to happen. I'm Andrew Bowen, partner of Ash Staging, and we are here at the Aster on the Upper West Side in this 3,200 square foot residence. When I first saw this home, I thought this is going to be interesting because it has a lot of the bones of a historic Manhattan home, but all of these modern upgrades. Let's take a look around and see what we did. When staging a home as expansive as this, it's vital to show people its full potential. We did that by showing this as a flexible den. We have this large, sumptuous sectional positioned around the fireplace, one of two in the home. And over the sofa, you'll notice these three paintings in a completely different color pattern. Contrast is important because it really energizes the experience. And infusing energy through design is one of the ways that we bring these historic properties into the 21st century. I am now standing in the defining characteristic of this home, the corridor. It is the artery that connects every single room together. We decided to paint it this near black color, which actually adds quite a bit of drama and mystery. By creating this moody experience, you're then greeted by all of these bright rooms with the opening of each door. The white oak floor is done in this classic herringbone pattern with inlay throughout that defines each section of the corridor. Beyond that, you'll see the incredible molding from the baseboard to the doors and the crown, really embodying that traditional Upper West Side architecture. One room that's been forgotten by time in New York is the ante room, but not here at the Astor. So here, we installed the semicircular marble console table, an irregular mirror, and a contemporary ottoman, so you could take one last look before you open the doors to the party. Because you only get one chance for a first impression. and what an impression this room makes. We had so much space to work with here, so we incorporated two slip-covered sofas, a pair of lounge chairs, as well as two ottomans by the fireplace, in addition to dining for eight. Like the building itself, our selection of each piece was meant to be timeless yet contemporary. Design and art are one and the same for us, and incorporating pieces that really complement the furniture is a critical part of our mission. You may have noticed that the room itself is not totally rectangular, and that provided a great opportunity for us to incorporate some of these more curved forms which really mediate the space. Even the dining table has a slight bow so that we have this free-form layout complementing a more formal arrangement. This home has four bedrooms, and each one was designed to have its own personality. But it is rare to find a primary suite of this caliber in a pre-war building in New York. The signature architectural feature of this room is the bay window. So we took advantage of that by creating a seating group with two club chairs and a side table. 
We also incorporated this oversized slip-covered king bed with matching nightstands and a velvet bench. What makes an exceptional primary suite is balance, making sure that you have a place to sit, a place to get dressed, and of course, a place to sleep. Staging's not about stripping personality. It's about adding it. Our mission was to create an oasis of modern luxury, and I think we did just that. Thanks for coming. Hope to see you next time. Coming up, we are in Los Angeles at this stylish home just above the Sunset Strip. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Los Angeles at this amenity filled home just above the Sunset Strip. We're with designer and stager Meredith Baer to see how she complemented the architectural flair and seamless indoor outdoor living with interiors that seem to say, welcome home. Take a look. I'm Meredith Baer. Welcome to 1772 Crescent Heights in the Hollywood Hills. Inside, you're gonna see a brand new, state-of-the-art, gorgeous home. It's sort of an industrial, modern, organic feel, and yet it is so cozy. You wanna cuddle up in every room. In the living space, we layered rugs. We brought in hand-woven pillows, rounded furniture, leathers, bolche fabric on the sofa. Oh, and a quick note, there are even light fixtures stuck in the wall. It adds to the eclectic, unexpected nature of what this house has to offer. And speaking of offerings, let's go take a look at the kitchen. The kitchen is extremely modern, and yet it's playful and user-friendly. Here's the breakfast room, and now it's smaller, because I want more open space. In terms of looks, this material is just breathtaking. I've never seen anything quite like it before. The developer, he repeated the material, so it's very complimentary and it feels of a piece. And the lighting fixtures he has, so unique. I mean, this one's just so playful. So this area is for a nice casual family meal. But if you're gonna be entertaining, I wanna show you the dining area. This dining area feels like a really cool restaurant. Above the table is a very unusual chandelier. It almost looks like it's standing there on its own because you can't really see the wire. And then there's this privacy wall that you actually can look through. <laughs> In this corner bar, you can see you have stone, you have live edge wood, metals. And it's wonderful how with all of these floor to ceiling windows, you have a sense wherever you are of being outdoors, but then if you actually want to go outdoors, you pull apart these massive floor to ceiling doors and look at what you see. This outdoor area has a little of everything for everybody. You have your sunbathing areas, you have your swimming areas, your dining, and your beautiful unobstructed views for miles. But for the cherry on top, you have to see the primary bedroom. This room brings together all the elements and design of the whole house, the ropes, the woods, the amazing views. So again, we brought in a rounded sofa, textures, and make it feel sumptuous. Look at this. No tour would be complete without your rooftop patio. More seating area for your guests with a wet bar, a fire pit, and let's not forget these amazing views. This concludes the tour. I hope you had a fantastic time, and I'll see you at the next one. in just a few, we are at this apartment featuring an architectural interpretation of a treehouse. Yes, a treehouse. Growing up in Oregon, nature was a huge inspiration for me to become an architect. And I also feel that there's so much nature missing in our modern life. Stay tuned.
Welcome back everyone. Now we're in one of the more unique homes you'll ever see in the West Village and beyond. Architect Andrew Hyde, founder of the firm No Architecture, created something of a legend in the neighborhood. One often seen from the street through the building's glass facade, but rarely experienced firsthand. And it's dubbed the Urban Treehouse. See what? Growing up in Oregon, nature was a huge inspiration for me to become an architect. And I also feel that there's so much nature missing in our modern life. I'm Andrew Hyde. I'm the founding principal of No Architecture based in New York City. Welcome to the Urban Treehouse here in the West Village. Come on in and I'll show you around. As soon as you walk in, you realize that this is not the modernist white box that the rest of this building looks like. This is a very different palette of materials. It's very organic, it's very warm, it's very muted, it's very natural. Originally, there were two apartments here with separate entrances, separate corridors, and what we did was to open up everything here. This living space, and it also can be closed off with this secret 15-foot sliding door. Another really important feature of this apartment is every wall doubles as storage, mechanical space, secret doors, off of the main entry space is this pantry area where we continue the use of natural materials like the exposed concrete, the stone, the wood, and a sense of compression before we enter into the main double height living space. This is the release. This is the wow factor. This is why we call it the urban tree house. In every direction you see windows and your eye goes out to the natural landscape and the river and the horizon beyond. Because of this dramatic scale, from the outside, these tree houses look like a public work of art. The two tree houses help define the different spaces here. The lower, larger one is the living space. The taller, more narrow one is the dining space over here next to the kitchen. And the original concept was for a much more enclosed structure. We realized we had to make something much more transparent and light, and hence the netting became really important for that. Like a giant piece of furniture, the tree houses are meant to be sat on, slept on, interacted with in a very active, dynamic way. The clients love to entertain here, have people jump up and down on the nets, and to enjoy the whole city space through these 22-foot glass windows. Under the second tree house is a dining space that is then connected to the main kitchen. For the dining area, we wanted something very intimate. I chose this Aerosernin dining table surrounded by Danish Morganson chairs because of the lightness of the structure and the cantilevered quality they bring. Surrounding this dining table are these large concrete fiber reinforced planters that create this relationship between the trees on the outside and the trees on the inside. After all, what is a tree house without trees? This home is configured as a two bedroom apartment. This is the guest bedroom. During the day, it's part of the living space, but at night, it can be closed off through the sliding bookcase and another sliding door to become a private room with its own bathroom. This is the primary suite, which we placed intentionally in the south exposure to have the best light in the winter time. The delicate quality of light, the use of natural materials, all creates this warmth and intimacy that makes this a human-centered space. The Urban Treehouse for me is a really important project because it represents the spiritual harmony between architecture and nature. I hope you enjoy taking a look at this dream project of mine. Thanks so much for coming. We're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, this artfully designed Upper West Side home. Welcome back everyone. Now we're at this elegant duplex penthouse atop a former school building on the Upper West Side. Check out the many design delights inside and out that this home has to offer and enjoy. I'm Kathy Taub with Sotheby's International Realty and I'm super excited to show you this amazing terrace penthouse on New York City's Upper West Side. Fun fact about this building, it was designed by architect William Boring in 1908 in the Beaux-Arts style, and it is anything but boring. There is so much to show you in this apartment, so let's get started. One of the many things I love about this apartment is that you have your own private landing, which means you don't share a space with any neighbors. 
and you walk into this incredible great room. The great room is divided into three separate spaces. There's a living room, a dining room, and a breakfast nook. And in the middle is a marble-clad gas fireplace. This marble was hand-delivered from a quarry in Italy. It's super luxe and beautiful. The floors throughout are quarter sewn and rift honed oak, some of which are laid in a herringbone pattern. One of the many design features of this space that I love is the tray ceiling, and you'll notice that there's perimeter lighting throughout. And can you believe all this gorgeous natural light? It's so bright, you need to wear your sunglasses in this apartment. But my favorite feature of this space has to be the floor-to-ceiling wraparound French doors. The casement French doors create this incredible pattern of sunlight on the floor and are open with this beautiful brass hardware. Can you believe this wrap terrace? It's the ultimate trophy penthouse. I love the contrast between the contemporary interiors and the landmark architecture from William Boring's turrets and to the landscape along this terrace. So this level features three guest bedrooms, a lounge area, and of course, the primary suite. This warm and inviting primary suite is the perfect place to relax and unwind. The four clerestory arched windows are so distinctive and remind me of the noble architecture of this building. The primary suite features the ultimate spa-like bathroom. There's luxurious calicotta marble throughout, deep soaking tub, double sinks, and steam shower with a peekaboo window. And just when you thought you've seen it all, I have one more surprise for you. And what better way to end this tour on yet another private rooftop terrace. There's over 2,800 square feet of private roof terrace, multiple seating areas, and views of the Hudson River and beyond. Thank you for joining me today to view this palatial penthouse on Manhattan's Upper West Side. I hope you enjoyed yourself as much as I enjoyed showing you. Cheers. Coming up just after the break, we are in Palm Springs for this modern take on a mid-century classic. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Palm Springs with designer Bradley Bayou. We see how he completely remade this home into ideal desert living. Take a look. Hi, I'm Bradley Bayou, and I'm an interior designer. And we're standing in front of my house in Palm Springs that I bought 20 years ago that has quite a pedigree. It was in great disrepair when I bought it, but it had been built by Bob Hope in the 50s. So I want to show you this house because it took a lot of work and a lot of effort and a lot of love for me. So come on, let's go in. And here we are in the lounge. It's an important part of this house, I believe, because it's the most open and it feels really comfortable and intimate for small groups and gatherings. The colors I used in this room, in fact, the entire house, I got from the outside, from the beautiful sunsets in Palm Springs to the mountain color and the blue sky. Strangely enough, this table behind me, the first thing I bought for this house, it's really sentimental to me because it's the only thing that stayed in the house during the entire construction period. I designed the day bed, and they're all my pillows from my pillow line, Bradley Bayou. And all the stuff, remember, I found here in Palm Springs. It's kind of nice to support the city and nice to just find things, especially when the city was being developed. When you first enter this sunken living room, the first thing you notice is it's really sunken. It's about four feet down. And the second thing you're gonna notice is the massive fireplace behind me. It's actually the same material as the floors, but it's stacked on its side. The rest of the room is basically filled up with a couch that I designed, and it's really like a feather mattress. In front of the couch, instead of using a coffee table, I designed six ottomans. They can be taken apart and used individually by people sitting on the couch, or they can just be used to bring more people in here to watch more television. Another great find was this beautiful chaise from the mid-century. I had it recovered a couple of times. It gets used a lot. 
I call this a sunroom because everything in here is yellow. Across from the bank head are two Adumine chairs. They're woven chairs. They're really rare find I found here in Palm Springs, another great find. The little table in between them, it's plastique, as they would say back then. It just brings a lot of life to the room and it's really fun. It's always great to have a sense of humor when you're designing and not just everything be so serious. But to me, the most interesting pieces in this room is this rug. It's made out of thread that's been taken off kimonos, old ancient kimonos, and woven into a modern rug. It was actually done in the 60s. Plus, it's lemon yellow. So this is what it's all about. It's about Palm Springs, sun, mountains, sunsets, and this is where I stay to view it all. The pool is really a unique pool. I kept the main pool, I ripped it up from the bottom, resurfaced it, put a bench in, and made it a real lounge area. This is actually where I come to design all my collections, or if I'm working on a house, because you feel insulated, but you're outside with the nature. And it's the most inspirational place in the world. Palm Springs is so much to me. It's the history, it's the beauty, it's the freedom of design you have, and all the color. Thank you for coming. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>